It's time Tom for Kubis. Baseball. Ben. <laughs> It's thank great. you for being a part of this project, by oh, the way. Well, oh, thank you. Gosh. Thank you for involving us. You know, your book contains like hundreds of charts. Mm -hmm. So why these tunes in particular for Take Me Out to the Ball Game? There's some tunes that I wrote within the last few years. Uh, I kind of got an inspiration of uh, some different kinds of some different kinds of tunes, some different ways of doing stuff that that, that I don't know, either life had changed or whatever, you know, you, you go through certain periods there, you know, you, when you first start out, you kind of like are imitating other arrangers. Like, mm. you know, everybody goes through their Thad Jones period or everybody goes break through their Basie period or their, you know, what are, you know, they find a composer that they really like. Manny Album was a guy that I, I, I particularly enjoyed and, okay. and so many other composers. And then it takes a long time for you to find who you actually are. You're doing this, well, hey, that sounds like that. That's great, I did it, you know, but that's not necessarily you. And so it takes time. Were there any of those periods where you felt you wanted to play that music live more or you wanted to do in the studio more or? Studio was a pipe dream because yeah. it was so expensive. Right. Like I said, you had $4,000 to walk in the door with tape yeah. Then you have an engineer, your 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 studio's, I don't know, $150, $200 an hour. Hmm. You got a second engineer, your rental equipment because, of, you know, whatever. And then, you know, all that stuff that goes on. And it's just, it was just overwhelming. And I get, th being in a studio, just, you, you it, when I was growing up, you wished for it, but you couldn't get it, you know, uh, unless you had some help. I could have never afforded all that stuff at that time. But I still always had this thing of wanting to write. And uh, and get it getting it played. So most of it was really basically for live performance or just for the grins of writing. You know, I mean, I've I used to have charts like this when when you had one on score paper. I'd have stacks of stuff that I could never afford to get copied. But ah, I moved on and did more stuff. You know, but I just love to write, kind of like some a novelist or something like okay. that. Okay. What what advice would you have for some young band leader? So like like now, it, <clears throat> your history. And we're, we are here in 2021, moving forward. Like, there's a lot of things that change. There's a lot of stuff that remains the same. What would you, what wisdom would you impart on somebody who's trying to do this? I think the biggest thing in all the arts, and especially with the internet and all that, there's a lot of people who uh, have opinions, and you should be this, and you should be that, mm -hmm. and and you can't do this, and you can't do that, or you you should do this differently, or whatever. Uh, the one thing I found, and it's it's a certain idealism, I guess is that you really truly have to believe in yourself, uh, believe in whatever vision that you are putting out there. Uh, you start out imitating and then, then you find a stamp, you find your thing, and you truly, no matter what anybody says, you believe in it. The first thing when we did the first album, somebody said in New York, they heard the album and they go, oh, these L.A. musicians, they're all getting in their Mercedes Benzes and they're doing their session and they're all driving home. And it was, it was like that was a horrible thing. Yeah. And uh, you just don't listen to that. You just do what you do. So I know you're doing this project, this uh, Music Minus One or project with Wayne. What other projects do you have on the horizon? Because of COVID, it kind of changed my, I think everybody had a, a, a moments of, tr of reflection on what this whole thing means, a year of not doing, almost two years of not doing anything. Um, trying to figure out what to do. And uh, I think the thing that it, it, it forced me to, not forced me to do, but pushed me to the direction, like just write, just keep on writing stuff, do lots of stuff and do that. And so I really haven't been taking any projects or like no big thing is coming out or whatever. I just have gotten, you know, I'll send I sent Wayne 30 more arrangements that I did like last month or whatever, you know, and it was just stuff that off the top of my head I did and then and then we kind of picked through it and then maybe we'll use it for this project or maybe we'll do it for that project. But at my age right now, I just feel like that's that's really what I want to do. I'm not sure I want to get involved and in, I've been on the road. I've done everything for everybody else. Mm. And I think it's this time in my life uh, because I can is just do the stuff that I want, just the stuff that feels good and, and you know, yeah. what I want to present. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, Ben. Great. Wonderful. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Wonderful you are and why I'm so proud.